What is going on YouTube? Hit him back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as the S&P 500. So we are going to be talking about the interesting movements that happened within cryptocurrency uh, yesterday and last night. We actually managed to see some of these major cryptos like Bitcoin start to see uh, a small flip within its four hour charts, as well as just in the current coin market cap. We saw Bitcoin, which was currently trading at around $57. $57,000 immediately blipped back down to $54,000, about a $3,000 drop in just a couple of hours. And it kind of scared a lot of people. I had a lot of people in my DMs and messages asking me uh, what exactly is happening. Should they sell off? Is the drop going to happen? Which just shows me the uncertainty that's surrounding this market for some early investors. But in today's video, I kind of want to explain what exactly happened, why I'm not too worried about that movement. And then I want to show you guys the XRP chart, kind of focus more on that as I feel, I believe we weren't really, uh, we were looking too in depth into the movements. And I do think we need to slightly tweak our charts if we want to be a little more accurate moving forward in, uh, you know, in the future videos. So if you guys are curious as to what the price targets are for XRP in the next couple of weeks, definitely make sure to subscribe watch the video to the end make sure to turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any important updates as well as make sure to follow me on twitter at crypto v official smash the like button and um let's jump right into today's episode All right, so as you guys can see, I'm on the top 10 cryptocurrency coin market cap. And as you guys can see, for the most part, today we're not really seeing any major price fluctuations. Things are pretty much just in some sort of consolidation. It actually seems like out of the top five cryptos, they're really not doing much. And then as we get lower to maybe the sixth to the 10th cryptocurrencies, they're really uh, kind of hitting a little bit of a fallback and falling about 5%. It's also pretty crazy to see Tether as the number six, as it used to be like the number three or number two on the the current coin market cap. It's just crazy to see how much of a flip we're seeing. It's also pretty insane to see Bitcoin now at $1 trillion in just Bitcoin alone in regards to its market cap. And then we have um, Ethereum at a quarter billion dollars, which is also just absolutely insane to see this market. And then the entire market is now at $1.73 trillion as a whole with Bitcoin owning $1 trillion of that. Almost a little more than half of the entire market cap is just solely within Bitcoin. Just makes you think that if we do see Bitcoin drop, uh, the whole market is going to see a big drop as well. Um, but to jump right into today's video, I just want to flash through some of the uh, altcoins before we land on XRP. You can see the way Litecoin's trading out right now. We have Bitcoin here, uh, Ethereum, and now I want to start on XRP. So as you guys can see right now, clearly with my XRP chart, there was a small, um, you know, in, inefficient, it was slightly inefficient and it, there was a small tweak that needs to be made on the chart itself. So as I was looking, uh, we've been focusing the past couple of days on the four hour price movements, not on the daily, not on the weekly. As we know, as I've discussed in the past, focusing on just a four hour price chart may get slightly tweaked and slightly biased as we're not necessarily getting the whole factor of things looking at daily price movements and stronger supports. Four hour movements and four hour supports don't really hold as well as daily ones do. Daily ones allow us to see where exactly wicks are and where exactly candles uh, end, you know, so candles and, and wicks. While on the four hour charts, we're really just seeing candle wicks across the entire board. So when you actually manage to extend ourselves out and look at the daily on XRP, you can see how much we were off just slightly. So if we had adjusted this something along the lines of here, and then slightly tweak this up like that, you would see a better understanding of what we're now experiencing. So this does once again, extend ourselves out. Uh, it does give us a little bit more of a time period, but it allows us to see a better overview of what we're seeing right now. So there is some sort of like pennant flag forming you can see there is still higher lows being set there is still some sort of ascending triangle pennant flag bull flag that is forming on the coin higher lows are still being made you can clearly see this was the first dip this was closer to 36 cents 
Then we jumped over to a bottom of 39 cents. We flipped back over and then we're currently at 50 cents. We wicked back at 47, but you can see we're headed every time we come down a little bit lower, it's higher than the prior low, which is allowing us to slowly build up momentum to eventually retest 63 cents. So when I was originally gauged at uh, you know February 22nd, it is now slowly pulling ourselves out and we may actually see this happen in the first week of March. So about a week and a half, a little bit later than I had originally predicted, but that's how we trade cryptocurrency. This is an open system. This actually gives us more opportunities to trade within the ascending triangle, which betters my trades than to wait for the actual point of breakout, which would happen closer to, I would say, the beginning of March. So I'm actually fairly excited to see that this gotten a little bit of an extension because this will allow us to capitalize off runs and trades when the price does decide to swing back up and maybe retest that top resistance right there, which is held at 63 cents. The other thing I wanted to do was uh, just kind of extend our reach. I wanted to go back in time, look at 2017. And I think this is fairly important as XRP is one of those cryptos that has not yet broken into all time highs, which allows us to use our prior resistances and prior supports to gauge future movements within the coin. So notice right now that this green line right here is the price that we're currently trading at. It's about 53 cents. Notice how much more support we have at the top and how much lower we can move to. So by pulling right here the horizontal line, I just wanna find that, boom, right here, I can now draw where support is. You can see right here, there's a clear resistance that we're retesting and a clear support that's been uh, made at this current price level right now. And then there is also a support right here Boom, just want to draw that in for us to use as a means of, you know, current movements to the upside. There was a clear double bottom that allowed us to swing to the upside. When we came back down, we used it as a support to head up a little bit higher. So now to jump back into 2021, you can see where these are kind of, you know, allowing us to use supports to swing to the upside. So I do believe there is still some sort of ascending triangle forming on XRP. And you can see how much easier this makes sense now if I swing us back to the uh, four hour charts. I just want to save my my chart you should always do that you can see how much easier this makes sense now okay so now we have our uptrend this is actually following the four hour moving average a little bit more smoother than the original um you know uptrend that i had originally drawn and that's okay as we know xrp is not a closed system cryptocurrency as a whole is not a closed system just like our bodies are an open system and things are always constantly changing and reacting and there are new levels that we're retesting not only within ourselves but within markets like this so by giving just the target analysis you can see there's a little bit more room for us to trade within this ascending triangle. Yes, it seems like there's more resistance here, but we have managed to breach back up to retest this one, two, three times now. So I do believe we are going to use this bottom support as long as the more, uh, the four hour moving average trends just on this green line right here. This will slowly allow us to tweak back up and retest 63, 63 cents, which um, kind of ends right at around now March 1st to originally March, I'd say March 2nd. Uh, so there's not much time here. It's currently the 21st. We have maybe a week left in the consolidation. So we may be able to slowly move back up and retest 63 cents. As long as we stay and hug above this four hour moving average, we'll still be okay. Yes, we are getting very close right now within where exactly the four hour moving averages are coming into contact. I don't wanna see our bearish cross there. If we do, we may actually be able to breach below here and anticipate a short, but I still think we're on track and I still think we're using the ascending triangle to slowly break above uh, to higher levels. We have not yet broken a prior low, which is a good sign. And until we do so, I'm still fairly bullish on the coin. Uh, and what I mean by that is, let's say we do decide to head up. Let's say the price actually managed to breach above this uh, white resistance here. And then we come back down and we close somewhere around 49 cents. This will be lower than the prior uptrend. And then there's a good chance we can see possibilities of the price correcting back down to its moving average on the daily. But we haven't seen that yet, and we've actually been using this uptrend fairly well. So there's a very high chance we're going to continue to bounce off of this and eventually swing up higher and retest 63 cents. So I'm not yet uh, concerned by yesterday's chart uh, as I had it tweaked to more of the four hour price movements. It was fairly concerning when I saw that, but I had to take a step back, look at daily and weekly charts and then gauge that I actually had drawn the uh, uptrend slightly wrong or inconsistent with the way the price was moving to. So definitely make sure to tweak your charts just a little bit to gauge the market a little bit better. And I would just wanna look at these other cryptocurrencies. And this is another 
major sign that we can obviously factor in when we do the technical analysis and the price movements. Obviously, looking at other cryptocurrencies will help us gauge further price movements within coins such as XRP, XLM, and these other smaller cryptocurrencies. As we know, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum make up the top two. They make up about, I would say, like three quarters of the market or maybe two thirds of the market right now as we speak. So when we look at Ethereum here, you can see there's a beautiful ascending fractal that's forming on the coin. And it's pretty much just been trading inside of this for quite a bit of time now, since the beginning of January. And I just wanna extend our reach, look at the daily again, because we weren't doing so on uh, XRP in a long time. You can see how well this plays out. So this is uh, what I want to talk about. This also applies itself within Bitcoin. But as we know right now within Ethereum, you can see that we are hitting top resistances. We've hit this top resistance here and it's ultimately allowing the coin to pull lower. This is very similar to looking at the S&P 500. Notice how in the S&P 500 when we were doing our tracking, you can see we did have our beautiful double bottom which shot the price up. But notice when we managed to hit this top resistance on this price fractal, we managed to correct lower. Prices managed to either consolidate and then eventually dip lower. It happened over and over and over again. When we hit this top resistance, it allows for consolidation. It allows for supports to be retested and we ultimately trade sideways or correct to the downside. I just want to pull up the weekly here if this actually loads. If not, oh well, um, I pretty much got my gist across to you guys. Um, so hopefully this loads in. If not, oh well. It's here it is. Great. This is what I wanted. And you can see right now on the weekly what I'm referring to. So I just want to extend this out. You can see as we start to gauge this top resistance and we start to gain a little bit further away, eventually we start to pull back down to retest bottom support. The same thing applies itself right now on Ethereum and some of these other altcoins just to, uh, to give you guys a better understanding. You can see right here when I throw back the Ethereum chart, as we start to hit this resistance, sometimes we end up correcting away from it. You can see back here in uh, early uh, January, the first week, we managed to hit resistance. We traded on it and then we immediately reversed. We had some uncertainty candles form here where there were major wicks on the daily and then we reverse downwards retest bottom support and ultimately have been trading inside of there then we managed to breach back up retest uptrend here then we broke back down to bottom support so regardless of the coin i do i'm not worried about the coin i do believe we're going to continue to head up higher as markets allow ourselves to do so until this fractal is broken i'm not really going to be worried so i wouldn't be worried until we see prices breach i would say below closer to 1830. If prices breach this ascending fractal and we close above this white uptrend here, or so we close below this white uptrend here, and for example, draw it on for you guys. Let's say prices move like this, and then boom, we actually close right there, and we fall to 1700. Then I would be worried that there's a good chance we're gonna short it down to the moving average right here because of how overextended we currently are. But until then, trading on the short term, we could easily see the coin, you know, bounce along like this, trade inside and easily retest 22, or sorry, test 22 to $2,300 on the coin before seeing that pullback. Ultimately, at some point, we are going to be seeing some sort of movement like this and the price is going to dump and we are going to come back with the uh, moving average. That was a terrible chart. Why don't you guys... Uh Sure, I'm going to hear that in the comments. At some point, we are going to come back down and retest the moving average right here. We are very overextended from that. But we might have a little bit more play before we see the pullback. This might be in March. It might be in April. It might be in July, June. Who knows? But until then, there is still some small shorts that we can make and some short-term movements we can make in the short term to capitalize off these runs and still make a profit during the week. So ultimately, there may be some consolidation. We may see the coin fluctuate, but this is uh, my reference to some of you guys. You can see in the past, we've had these price fluctuations, um, but ultimately, Every time we've retested this bottom support, it pretty much came back to the upside. So really what we're looking for is a movement like this. If I was to buy back in, I would need the price to kind of come back down. Let me just remove these. Uh, I would need the price to come back down, retest bottom right here. And the second we retest this uptrend, then I know to buy in. So if I see the coin come back here, down here and we uh, open the next day, there's a good chance we're going to swing back up. So I'll be buying in. When we close above this resistance, I'll buy in for a swing to the upside. You can kind of look back down for reference. You can see where we've actually retested this multiple times. And I might actually just slightly tweak this to better uh, a position 
just like this. Let me uh, extend this to you guys so you guys can get that easier understanding. Something like that may be more inclined than, um, than previous. There is like a smaller uptrend here, as you guys can see for the most part, but I'm not really too worried about that. Um, but this is the uptrend that we've been using long term. So if we see bottom support fall back down and we come back down to retest this uptrend here, we close the daily above that, then there's a very good chance we'll see that swing. Notice every single time we've actually come back down and either wicked and retested it, we ended up shooting up. Or if we closed on that level, on that bottom support, we ended up shooting up. And I just want to draw that out. Notice when we hit this bottom support, we immediately wicked back up and headed higher. We then had a big, strong supporting candle closed above the daily, we immediately headed up higher. It's happened over and over again. We've come back down, retested bottom support, closed above the daily, immediately headed up higher. So the same thing applies itself here. Even if we wick back down, retest this, good chance I'll buy in to swing back to the upside. Or if we come back down and close a candle like here, and the next day we open up above this support, there's a good chance we'll head up higher. So ultimately, I'm waiting for this level to buy in and then immediately swing it back to the upside. Now that covers XRP and Ethereum. We're kind of going a little bit over uh, the time that I wanted to. But as for Bitcoin, I still think Bitcoin is in what I believed was these massive, you know, bullish fractals that keep forming. Notice every time we see this bullish fractal, it comes back down a little bit and swings up higher. Same thing's kind of happening here. I do think we may see a little bit of a, a small dump to the downside here, as we've seen at the tops. And then we may see the coin end up swinging even higher up. As for right now, I'm not too worried. Coins are still, yes, they're slightly overextended, but they're still heading up higher. So I still think there's more room for these coins to head up and up and up. But at some point, you guys have to consider potential reversal as markets are becoming extremely overextended. Um, yeah, that's pretty much going to cover today's video, guys. I know we didn't go as in-depth as I wanted into like Bitcoin or Litecoin, but I wanted to spend quite a bit of time focusing on XRP as I felt like that was the most important crypto. As for Bitcoin, it looks okay, but uh, we are getting uh, to levels that are showing uncertainty. Granted, we've seen these in the past. We've seen these in the past, and they reference a reversal, and then we immediately saw prices move up. This was a reversal candle. We fell. This was also a reversal candle, and surprisingly, we actually managed to break up higher, but very interesting. We'll have to spend another episode focusing in-depth on just Bitcoin. As for Litecoin, it looks okay right now. Uptrend's still in place, but again, you know, jump back into the daily. We can kind of get a general consensus of what exactly is going on. It seems like Litecoin has actually hit its bottom right now. I'm going to extend this ever so slightly. You can see it looks like Litecoin has hit its bottom. It looks like the coin wants to pump up higher, but we'll see. Uh, if we close, if today closes above for Litecoin, if today closes above this uh, this support here, good chance we're going to see it pop up quite a bit higher. Uh, if we close below here, we could see a big drop in price. So uh, big focus on X on Litecoin for today. Otherwise, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video, guys. If you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a giant thumbs up as this does help support the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to subscribe like I was talking about. Make sure to follow me on, on Twitter, CryptoVOfficial, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.